Hello and welcome to another video in the Key Concept series where we talk about some of the fundamentals of coaching good blood ball. This time I'm going to talk about recovering the line of scrimmage. On defence, recovering the line of scrimmage is one of the first key things you'll want to do. Almost regardless of your plan for defending later in the drive, this will be crucial to your success. What we mean by this is simply that we want to get the three players we were forced to set up on the line of scrimmage back into formation with the rest of the players on our team. From there, they can become active members of our defence, rather than just passively standing up to be blocked by opposing players every turn. So why do we want to do this? The biggest advantage a defending team has is one of numbers. The team on offence needs a player to hold the ball, and usually a couple more to stand at the back of the cage. These are players who are not free to push forward and try and break through our defence. But to leverage this advantage, the defending team needs to have access to all of their players, again a way to make use of them actively rather than passively. Every player on the defending team needs to be making a nuisance of themselves in some way, but if we just leave the line of scrimmage players on their own, our opponent will be free to punch them every turn for free, and eventually the odds will tell and these players will start getting KO'd or casualtyed, which means they lose the advantage of our numbers. This concept is most important if you have two evenly matched teams. If one team is extremely agile, they can just dodge away with ease, or if one team is much stronger than their opposition, they can bully them with impunity. But generally, this is a skill that will come up in the majority of our games. There are plenty of ways which you can try and recover the line scrimmage, so let's run through a few of them now. This might seem obvious, but the simplest method of recovering the line scrimmage is just dodging your players away. Some teams like Elder Amazons find this easy, others like Humans and Skaven have a fair chance of success but can't rely on it. Then other teams like Undead will really struggle to try and dodge away with a bunch of zombies. In almost every case though, you want to leave these dodges for the end of your turn, and defend in such a way that you don't need to leave a hole in your f lines and force yourself into using a team reroll. We've got this defense here, which is some Dark Elves against some Undead, and we've got a couple of players, or three players here, trapped, and we want to recover them and get them back into this line of where our defense is. So, a simple thing we can do is to make it easier for this guy to get out, so we can try and blitz away the person that's pinning him in and give him a 2 plus dodge rather than a 3 plus dodge. Okay, and we've rolled double skulls here, but you can see that we've already moved some of our players in such a way that if we really wanted to, we could take this double skulls. If this was a proper game rather than an example, I probably would, because we've only got two for the whole game, um, and can't afford to be wasting one on the first turn. But as this is an example, we'll re-roll it, and we'll just move through the rest of the actions. Okay, and we were careful where we placed our assist there, so we didn't block off the square that we wanted to dodge out to. Okay, really we should have um, dodged first with this dodge player with dodge skill, um, but I've never used this example team before, so I wasn't quite sure. Yeah, and finally we used this difficult one to last and then get them back in there. And the other thing we did was that, if you notice, with all of our dodges, we were dodging, we'd lined up our players like this, so we were dodging away so we'd fall over here, if we did fall over, which meant that we couldn't get tagged again for free. Another way of recovering our players from the line is to block off follow-ups for future blocks. So in this case we've got this line of doors here that we can't really contest, there's too many of them. And what we can do is we put a line of all our players here and then stand up our guys on the line. We don't want to dodge them really because three pluses is slightly risky so we're going to try this instead. So we've lined up directly behind these guys and then if the doors want to block them and also follow up the block to tag the player on the floor after we knock them down, they're going to have to follow up next to you, two of our guys. And we're quite spread out over a line here so that they can't just swamp us and follow up with everybody and push everybody in and just get in our faces quite as easily. We've been careful to leave a gap as well so we can't just get chain pushed away. So we've got these little places here and it's even better in this situation because um, these guys have got friends who say they're forced to follow up so they don't even really want to block at all because this trolls player doesn't want to follow up and get stand next to an ogre. Finally, we've got this player, we're going to have to leave him on the floor because he is not in the same situation as these guys. The dwarves can block him and push him back to a square where he is just going to have to stand up and get blocked again next turn. We're not going to recover him that way. So we're just going to leave him for one turn and see if we can get him back in the next one. Another way of recovering the line is to try and recover the players one at a time. So in this case, um, we're going to just try and get one of our players back by pressuring one side of the line and then leaving the other side alone. So in this case, this is the player we're trying to retrieve, and then we might leave these two other guys for another turn, get them back later. So we're just putting our big strong ogre, who can't really be contested by the Necromander team, up against this guy. We're going to blitz this zombie out of the way, and make it three on one over here. And then using the same technique from the previous example, this guy can't be blocked. 
without coming back into one of these squares, which is safe. That's going to be a place that we can retrieve him, and he'll suddenly become part of our active team again. Uh, even if this was a mummy rather than a um, werewolf who doesn't really want to block because of frenzy, regardless of who that was, this player is being blocked back here, and he's being rescued, and then uh, this player is under a little bit of pressure as well. And we've no we've left this side completely on its own, we've not tried to overcommit and save everybody all at once, and we'll leave these two players on the floor, and then try and get them back in a future turn. Another way of recovering the line of scrimmage is to never give it away in the first place. This isn't always possible, but when a strong team faces it against a, a weak one, often they can stack the line of scrimmage and deny their opponent effective blocks to begin with. An example of this might be this orc team against these high elves, where we put our strength 4 and 5 players on the line and then push these forward to deny an assist from this square here. Not too worried about the quick snap, it is a risk, but we take a positive risk on that and just make it very difficult for the dials to make any blocks at all and in this case you can see that they've just set up away from there completely and just given up the line and that means we never have to try and recover it in the first place. Whilst recovering the line of scrimmage is generally good practice there will always be times where it might not be as useful. If we look to be more aggressive and attack our opponent from the first turn standing up the players on the line of scrimmage to temporarily tie up opposition players might be a good idea. For example if our opponent fails a pickup roll in a position we can reach it recovering the line is probably not our first priority. Hopefully this video has been of some use and will help you structure the early part of your defensive drives a little better. As ever, if you enjoyed this please like and subscribe and check out the other videos in the series. Thanks for watching!